Hello, my name is Rafael Moreno, and today I will be talking to you about trans athletes in sports. I would like to start off with a quote from a trans activist, Leslie Feinberg. They state, like racism and all forms of prejudice, bigotry against transgender people is a deadly carcinogen. We are pitted against each other in order to keep us from seeing each other as allies. Genuine bonds of solidarity can be forged between people who respect each other's differences and are willing to fight their enemy together. We are the class that does the work of the world and can revolutionize it. We can win true liberation. You may be asking what it means to be transgender. The word transgender or trans is an umbrella term for people whose gender identity is different from the sex assigned to them at birth. Trans athletes competing in sports has been a hot topic that many lawmakers and right-wing conservatives have been talking about. Many of them have said that trans athletes, especially trans women, pose a threat to sports. Lawmakers want to ban trans athletes from competing in sports as they think that trans athletes have an advantage over biological athletes. This is completely discriminatory against trans athletes as restrictions are held based on their identity, and this is truly misinformation that is being spread with no scientific research. Something that people fail to realize is that everyone has a biological advantage. So let me give you an example. Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid, a performance enhancing hormone that allowed him to swim better than his opponents who are cisgender athletes. This is something that was widely celebrated and yet nobody took measures to take Michael Phelps out of competition as he does pose an advantage over his opponents. Another example, according to Gender Justice, they say Michael Phelps excels at swimming in part because his wingspan is longer than his height. He is hyperjointed in the chest, meaning that he can kick from his chest instead of just his ribs. His double jointed ankles bend 15% more than his rivals and coupled with his size 14 feet, help his legs act like flippers to glide him through the water. So this goes to prove my argument that cis athletes have biological advantages, yet they are not contested because the media sees this as normal. Yes, trans, trans women who are athletes who have not gone through HRT will pose a advantage. Medical and sports organizations all agree that trans women who have gone through one or more years of HRT are allowed to compete in sports as they pose no advantage and have the same competitive abilities. Leah Thomas, a professional trans swimmer, went through three years of hormones and she had lost strength and an inch, height, inch of her height because of her hormone therapy. Leah Thomas did win the women's 500-yard freestyle race, placed fifth in the 200-yard race, uh, eighth in a 100-yard race. Leah's accomplishments are impressive, but out of all of the 27 groundbreaking records that the NCAA has seen, Leah Thomas was not part of those 27. So to this day, Leah has not won a national title, and plenty of cis women swimmers have beaten Leah Thomas. This shows that Leah Thomas, a trans athlete, does not have an advantage over cis women. Then we have trans women Glenique Frank, who participated in a marathon hosted in the UK. She placed 6,159th place out of 14,000 women. The media throws a fit and claims that Glenique Frank beat every single woman who competed in the marathon. This proves that the media only keeps spreading misinformation, but most importantly proves that trans athletes pose no threat to cisgender athletes. Lastly, Chelsea Mitchell, a cisgender female track athlete, is suing the state after she lost to trans athletes. She is known as the fastest girl, but that is just a name that she gave herself. Chelsea claimed that it is impossible for her to beat these trans athletes, which caused her many scholarship opportunities. This adds to the anti-trans propaganda because she did have plenty of times to beat these trans competitors, and she did receive a scholarship to the College of William and Mary, where she was able to run track. Whereas the two trans athletes who received no scholarship, who competed with her, received no scholarship opportunities, which goes to show that Chelsea was the only track athlete to get a collegiate track scholarship. So to sum this all up, trans athletes are not taking opportunities from cis athletes as it is proven in the case of Chelsea Mitchell and her trans competitors. Trans athletes do not have an advantage over cisgender athletes as we see Leah Thomas, a trans swimmer, placing below cisgender women and has not won another national title. Lastly, Glenique Frank also placed below cisgender women in the marathon and posts no signs of advantage. Overall, trans athletes deserve to compete with cisgender athletes as they pose no threat to their competitors. This is all this is off topic, but I also wanted to enlighten everyone about the 300 plus trans lives that we have lost this year alone. 
Here are 35 trans and gender non-confirming angels that we have lost. Say their names. Jasmine Star Mac, Casey Johnson, Tortuguita, Unique Bings, Zaki Imani Witaho, Maria Jose Rivera Rivera, Tashay Henderson, Tasia Woodland, Ashley Burden, Rashida Williams, Bingo Brown, Ashia Davis, Chanel Perez Ortiz, Jacob Williamson, Camden Ryder, Kylie Manali, Devani Jure Johnson, Thomas Tom Tom Robinson, Charm Wilson, Brasia Banks, Alexa Sokova, Yoko, Cody Lawrence, two who are unidentified, Luis Angel Diaz Castro, Thedius Tad Keegan Bradley, Sherlyn Marjorie, China Long, Skylar Harrison, Ani Johnson, Dominique Palace Dubri, Lisa Love, Lovely Page, London Price, and LaKindra Andrews. Thank you.